This is where we hold them. This is where we fight. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 20 most historically inaccurate movies. Can you make sure the gunners everyone's where they need to be, Captain? You trained us well. For this list, we'll be looking at the most notorious cases of films rewriting history. Which of these do you find to be the biggest offense? Let us know in the comments below. Number 20, Bohemian Rhapsody. If you're looking for a movie that idolizes Freddie Mercury and his iconic band, then Bohemian Rhapsody is the movie for you. Say the name Queen, on the other hand. He is prick up. But if you want a realistic glimpse into Queen, then may we recommend a documentary or book? This movie was widely criticized for its shallowness, with many noticing only surface level observations about the band. It's also full of historical inaccuracies, with various events being compressed and even outright fictionalized. The formation of Queen, Freddie Mercury's sickness, the management of the band, most of the Live Aid stuff, it's all portrayed in an unrealistic or exaggerated manner. Heck, they even got the songs wrong, like We Will Rock You being written three years later than it actually was. I want to give the audience a song that they can perform, right? Let them be part of the band. So what can they do? Number 19, Patch Adams. This saccharine comedy starring Robin Williams is well liked by general audiences, becoming a box office hit. But critics despised it. With a DOA rating on Rotten Tomatoes, Patch Adams was called everything from lowbrow to shameless and offensive. You treat a disease, you win, you lose. You treat a person, I guarantee you, you win no matter what the outcome. The real Patch Adams would agree. He once told Roger Ebert that he quote, hates the movie, as it simplified his message to feel good smalts and portrayed his work in a one dimensional manner. While Adams has said kind things about Robin Williams and his performance, he can't say the same for the movie or its inaccuracies. This includes largely fictionalized characters like Adams' love interest played by Monica Potter. These people that were helping, they would have had nowhere to go. You're a good man. Number 18, U-571. There was indeed a German submarine called U-571, but that's where the history lesson ends. Everything else is completely fabricated. An action war movie, U-571 follows a group of undercover Americans who board the titular submarine to steal a piece of spyware. On board that U-boat, is this. A typewriter, an Enigma code machine. Perhaps the biggest affront to history is the very inclusion of Americans. In reality, the first naval Enigma machine was captured before the United States even entered World War II. Aside from that, the film is stuffed to the brim with technical mistakes and other historical inaccuracies. So much so that British MP Brian Jenkins called it, quote, an affront to the memories of British sailors. The real U-571 wasn't even involved in this story. It bears a closer resemblance to the capture of U-110. If you can't take out that destroyer, the danger's not that some of us may die, but that some of us may live. Number 17. 10,000 BC. It goes without saying, but you should never view a Roland Emmerich film as a historical document. As the title suggests, this film takes place around 10,000 BC and depicts the trials and tribulations of some mammoth hunters. The people of the Agal hunt the mightiest of beasts, the Manak. While beautiful, the movie is a complete mess, especially in terms of historical accuracy. The anachronisms alone are stupefying and hard to believe, like the use of iron, the presence of corn in the Ural Mountains, and the building of the Great Pyramids. There are even geographical issues blending with anachronisms, like the long extinct terror birds being in Eurasia. Suffice to say, Emmerich plays it very fast and loose when it comes to human history. But some men have a great destiny. They must draw around themselves 
a circle that includes many, many more. Number 16. A Beautiful Mind Not all historically inaccurate films are critically reviled. Take for instance A Beautiful Mind, a well, beautiful movie that conjured up eight Oscar nominations and four wins, including Best Picture. It depicts the life of John Nash, a Nobel-winning mathematician who suffered from schizophrenia. Which is more likely that your husband, a mathematician with no military training, is a government spy fleeing the You're Russians? You're making him sound crazy. Or that he has lost his grip on reality. While respectful to Nash, the movie's depiction of his illness is rather inaccurate. There is also the whitewashing controversy, with New York native Jennifer Connelly playing Nash's Central American wife. Aside from that, there are the usual feel-good distortions typically seen in biopics, like the inclusion of a rousing climactic speech that never actually happened. But after a lifetime of such pursuits, I ask, what truly is logic? Number 15. Anastasia Look, no one is taking this animated film with sorcerers and talking bats as serious history. I'd give her a ha, then a hi ya, and then a woo! and I dick her, sir. Anastasia is first and foremost a piece of family entertainment, but the story is sourced from the past, and it's worth discussing. Anastasia takes place during the Russian Revolution and sees the real mystic Grigory Rasputin as an antagonist, but the story itself is completely made up. In fact, it's based on an old Russian urban legend. The Rio Grande Duchess Anastasia died with the rest of her family on July 17th 1918. Later, a woman with mental health issues named Anna Anderson claimed to be Anastasia, fueling rumors of her survival. These rumors are of course completely unfounded, but they certainly make for a great story. That means our Anya has found her family. We have found the heir to the Russian throne. Number 14. Argo. Funny. Argo recounts the Canadian caper, yet there are barely any Canadians in it. Call the Times nailed to the goddamn door. CIA are the good guys. The Canadians are the good guys. Yeah, we're not greedy, them too. Ben Affleck plays Tony Mendez, a CIA agent who rescued six American diplomats from Iran. While Mendez played an important role in the caper, so did the Canadian government. The film has been criticized by historians for pushing aside that country's involvement in favor of a pro-American telling. The CIA's role in the caper is enormously glorified, as are the dangers that the team faces throughout the film. In reality, they encountered no notable resistance. Jimmy Carter, who was president at the time, credits 90% of the operation to Canada and posits that Canadian Ambassador Ken Taylor played a greater role than Mendez. Involved in what? We were as surprised as anybody. Thank you, Canada. Number 13, 300. Like Anastasia, 300 is not meant to be taken seriously. It's based on a comic book and features strong elements of fantasy, but its inaccuracies are hard to ignore. The movie recounts the Battle of Thermopylae, which was fought thousands of years ago between ancient Greece and the Persian Empire. You insult my queen. You threaten my people with slavery and death. Oh, I've chosen my words carefully, Persian. Of course, there are all the silly inaccuracies like battle rhinos and bare-chested Spartans doing MMA. There is the morally idealized notion of Sparta and the movie's false heroes versus villains dichotomy. And of course, there weren't just 300 soldiers, but thousands. Frank Miller, the author of the graphic novel, claims that these changes were intentional for the sake of fun and exciting storytelling. So we suppose we can't be too mad. And all who know that 300 Spartans gave their last breath to defend it. Number 12, Apocalypto. We'll give Mel Gibson credit. He can make a mean movie. Apocalypto is the director's historical epic about the decline of Mayan civilization. The film was praised for its realism, featuring indigenous Mexican actors and the use of the Yucatec Maya language.
Still, there are more than a few problems. Some historians have argued that the movie mixes up Mayan and Aztec cultures, especially when it comes to the use of human sacrifice. There are also notable examples of time warping, such as the different architectural styles of buildings. And finally, many historians argue that Apocalypto is racist for depicting the Mayans as a barbaric and violent culture while ignoring their greater and more peaceful accomplishments. But nice Number 11. Marie Antoinette One look at this movie's poster tells you all you need to know. Kirsten Dunst stares seductively into the camera while the text is displayed in a very garish and comic booky pink. It's very stylized for a period drama, and this heightened style sets the tone for the film itself. This is ridiculous. This, madame, is Versailles. Director Sofia Coppola called her work an interpretation rather than a lesson of history, and for good reason. Modern bands like The Strokes appear on the soundtrack, and characters even wear Converse shoes. The film's depiction of Marie Antoinette was viciously criticized, as were the myriad of anachronisms and historical eras. Are you admiring your Lime Avenue? I'm saying goodbye. Number 10. The Untouchables Back in the early 1930s, a Prohibition agent named Elliot Ness ran The Untouchables, a group of studious law enforcement officers who worked to bring down Al Capone. You said you wanted to know how to get Capone. Do you really want to get him? You see what I'm saying? His work was immortalized in the 1957 autobiography of the same name, which was then adapted into this Brian De Palma classic. While it contains a great story, most of it is completely made up. All the juiciest details are fabricated for the movie, including the border raid and train station shootout. Furthermore, Al Capone and Elliot Ness never personally met, and Capone never antagonized Ness's outfit with violence. The ending is also highly fictitious, as Frank Nitti was not killed by Ness, he took his own life 12 years after Capone was put away. Number 9. JFK Oliver Stone is a very political filmmaker, and he does not agree with the Warren Commission's finding that Lee Harvey Oswald killed John F. Kennedy. Time me. Go. Time. This led to JFK, a thriller based in conspiracy theory. It loosely adapts the trial of Clay Shaw, which occurred in 1969. Shaw was charged with conspiring to assassinate the president, but was quickly found not guilty. Stone's movie received a lot of heat in the press, with many calling it insulting, offensive, and borderline libelous, especially for its framing of Lyndon B. Johnson as a conspirator. The president of the MPAA even called it, quote, propaganda and compared it to the Nazi film Triumph of the Will. So, no, people were not happy with JFK's wobbly depiction of history. And if there was a second rifleman, then by definition, there had to be a conspiracy. Number 8. The Last Samurai A controversial movie, The Last Samurai loosely depicts the Satsuma Rebellion of 1877 which saw powerless samurai revolting against the new empire of Japan. How many men will we have? Maybe 500. Like General Acosta, huh? Tom Cruise stars as Nathan Algren, a composite character based on numerous historical figures, including Jules Brunette and Philip Kearney. The movie has been viciously criticized for its depiction of history. One major contention is its portrayal of the samurai themselves. Their cause was not one of noble morality or justice, as is depicted in the film, but power. They were afraid of losing their position in the increasingly modernized empire. There is also no record of an American Civil War veteran training the Japanese. In reality, Japan received help from Prussian and British military advisors. Warriors willing to give their lives for what seems to have become a forgotten word. Honor. 
Number 7. Shakespeare in Love While it's certainly a cute little movie, there are many reasons to dislike Shakespeare in Love. Its involvement of producer Harvey Weinstein, its infamous beating of Saving Private Ryan for Best Picture, and yes, its wildly inaccurate story. As if the organ of my imagination has dried up. As if the proud tower of my genius has collapsed. Interesting. While a work of fiction, the movie still contains many historical figures, including Philip Henslow, Ned Allen, and of course, Shakespeare himself. The very plot of the film is fabricated, as Viola de Lesseps never existed, and Shakespeare did not invent the story of Romeo and Juliet. There are also some major anachronisms, although these were intentional. For example, the Earl of Wessex title went extinct in the 11th century, and there were certainly no tobacco plantations in America in the 1590s. She's a beauty, my lord, as would take a king to church for the dowry of a nutmeg. Number 6. The Patriot We've discussed both Roland Emmerich and Mel Gibson on this list, and they combine forces for the fun but very flawed The Patriot. Emmerich directs and Gibson stars as Benjamin Martin, an American farmer who becomes a leader in the Revolutionary War. An elected legislature can trample a man's rights as easily as a king can. <laughs> Captain Martin, I understood you to be a patriot. Like Nathan Algren, Benjamin is a composite character of many historical figures, including the fighting gamecock Thomas Sumter. While a ton of research went into the setting and production design, and while the movie adapts a few pieces of history, the story itself comes solely from the imagination of screenwriter Robert Rodat. One particular scene of a church burning earned a ton of criticism, as it has no basis in history and makes the British look like barbaric war criminals. Didn't you say all those who stand against England deserve to die a traitor's death? Burn the church, Captain. Number 5. Amadeus being one of the greatest movies ever made does not excuse your historical inaccuracies. Granted, Amadeus was never meant to be taken as a serious piece of history. The story is fictional, having been inspired by an old Russian play by Alexander Pushkin. The plot comes from a false rumor that Amadeus Mozart and Antonio Salieri were bitter and even mortal enemies. The only thing that worried me was the actual killing. How does one do that? Hmm? How does one kill a man? The two were indeed professional rivals, but the clash was not personal, and Salieri never conspired to kill Mozart. In fact, there is tons of evidence to suggest that Mozart and Salieri were friends, or at least supporters of each other's art. The concocted nature of the story was addressed by director Milos Forman, who called his movie a quote, Fantasia. This piece had to be an accident. But had to be. It better be. Number 4. Alexander The story of Alexander the Great demands a historical epic. Oliver Stone tried in 2004 with Alexander, but the film greatly underperformed. Not only did it bomb at the box office, but it received exceedingly harsh reviews for its pacing, writing, and historical inaccuracy. But what does it all mean when there is no one left to remember the great cavalry charge at Gargamela or the mountains of the Hindu Kush? The movie's orientalist notions received particular criticism with inaccurately organized and turbaned Persian soldiers. Stone also conflated or simplified many major battles and filled the movie with anachronisms. For example, the Persians should not be speaking Arabic and the lighthouse of Alexandria pops up years before it was built. The inaccuracies are so bad that a group of Greek lawyers threatened to sue Stone, but the case was eventually dropped. Babylon, with its deep water harbor, will be the center of the world. Alexandrias will grow. Populations will mix and travel freely. Number 3. Pearl Harbor Maybe Michael Bay wasn't the director to helm a movie about Pearl Harbor. Virtually every aspect of the movie was criticized, leading to six Razzie nominations, including Worst Director and Worst Picture. You are so beautiful, it hurts. It's your nose that hurts. Oh, 
think it's my heart. But it wasn't just the filmmaking that drew collective ire. Historians have also lambasted the movie for its gross inaccuracies, as have veterans that survived the attack back in 1941. Some of the changes even border on the offensive, like the polio-stricken Roosevelt rising from his wheelchair and the Japanese bombers intentionally attacking a naval hospital. In fact, the movie generated debate about artistic license and to what extent it should be allowed when applied to history. Do not tell me. It can't be done. Number 2. Pocahontas Disney was at the height of their renaissance when they released Pocahontas. However, it failed to live up to its predecessors and received mixed reviews. Its depiction of history was particularly reviled. I'd rather die tomorrow than live a hundred years without knowing you. The film greatly Disneyfies the story of Pocahontas, John Smith, and the Virginia Company. Various aspects of Pocahontas herself are wrong. For example, her real name was Matoaka, not Pocahontas, and she was only a preteen when the Virginia Company arrived. Furthermore, there were never any romantic feelings between Matoaka and John Smith. As for Smith, he was said to be a disagreeable and unpleasant fellow, not a kind blonde Disney hunk. And as for the fate of Ratcliffe, well, let's just say that would never find its way into a family film. Williams, why do you think those insolent heathens attacked us? Because we invaded their land and cut down their trees and dug up their earth. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Braveheart we return to Mel Gibson one final time for Braveheart, which has long been the poster child for historically inaccurate movies. That didn't stop the film from succeeding, of course. It grossed over $200 million and received five Oscars, including Best Director and Best Picture. To come back here and tell our enemies that they may take our lives, but they'll never take Oh, freedom! The filmmaking is exquisite, the history absurd. It supposedly tells the story of Sir William Wallace and the First War of Scottish Independence, but there are so many inaccuracies that it could be deemed a work of fiction. Flawed character depictions, myths portrayed as fact, warped timelines, bad military work, enough anachronisms to write a book, it's all here and it's all glaring. Gibson had the freedom to diverge from history, and he certainly took advantage. Freedom! Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.